Hello. Uh, so this is a still continuation of iteration number two. And uh, after planning that in the previous video, we'll uh, focus here on um, <coughs> creating the, cost the contact class. So go back to Xcode and uh, right click on the project name and add click on new file. And inside the iOS template, click on source, Coca Touch class, and then next. Uh, the subclass of, you need to specify a subclass of. Uh, so since this class is not going to be serving any of those, um, we'll subclass it of NS object. So we'll select NS object here and then provide the class name and we'll use the name contact. Class names need to be uh, start with an uppercase and the language is Swift. Next, choose where you want to save it. I'm going to save it in the same group where I have all the other files and then create. So here is your uh, contact class. You may want to provide some information in the beginning here on uh, what that mean, what this uh, class mean. So we'll say this is uh, models the uh, contact object for the address book project something like that and uh, the class has two things attributes and the attributes are things that you define in the beginning uh, of the class as a variable or as um, a constant a variable is an attribute that can change a constant is an attribute that does not change after it is initialized so first name, last name, and email, these are all things that will change every time you create a contact, a new value for first name, last name, and email will be there. So we'll define it with the keyword uh, var. Var is a keyword to define a changing uh, variable. Uh, after var, we provide the name. So the name uh, for the first one will be first name. Then uh, you provide the type. And you can provide the type explicitly by using the column and then provide the type name and the type here for this we choose to be a string. And then you can choose to provide an initial value or use the exclamation mark to indicate that this is an optional variable, that this is variable that can have no initial value. And I didn't need that uh, space here. So you either provide it this way, which means that this first name can exist without being initialized, or you provide an initial value. So I'm going to provide an initial value that's an empty string. So I say equal, and then call on the string class, and call on one of its initial uh, methods, uh, initialization method, the empty string, which initializes to an empty string. You can also use double quotations to initialize to an empty string. Uh, so this will be the variable for first name. I can do the same thing to define a last name. And the same thing for an email. Now, Swift is... Uh, is, is a typed language, but it infers the type from the value, meaning that since on the right side I specified a string, Swift will automatically assign the type to a string, rendering the word string as a type redundant. So in the email address, I don't have to specify a string. I can just say equal and then use a string like that or use double quotations like this. So this one... Uh, no need for the explicit type since the type is inferred from the value to the right from the initial value. And the initial value can either be empty string that is created by calling the in string initializer or the constant uh, empty string that has two double uh, quotations. 
So that creates the attributes of the class contact. Then we're looking for the functions. So we have two functions. The first function is we want, uh, actually we, we have only one function we want to do, which is an initializer that allows the user to provide value for each one of those and then uh, we can initialize the um, and, and we can assign those values to the attribute. So we can create here a uh, custom uh, initializer. So the initializer has to start with the keyword in it and then this is the function name So this is the name of the function. Doesn't need the keyword function before it. And then you provide the type, the data uh, there. So we'll say that we want an initializer that will receive the first name. So you can provide a label. So I'll use this label. So the, the first word here is a label for the argument. Then you provide a name for it. So I'm going to call this user first name. So that's an identifier for the argument for the variable that you use here. Then you provide the type. So these three are basically saying the initializer will receive one argument. That argument I'm going to label it first so that you know what it is about and the user also know what it is about. The identifier which is the name that's associated to that memory location and the type of that data that goes into that memory location. You can have as many initializers as you want separated by a comma. So I'm going to add another one for the last name. And it's also going to require a string. Then I'm going to add uh, a third one for email address. And also will be a string. So this is the what we call the function identifier, the function signature that has the name and the parameter list. Then we provide the function body. The function body then uh, will have uh, the, uh, the specifications or, or the initial uh, the assignment or whatever you want to do at that initialization step. When you have a superclass, it's always good to initialize the super class first and we've used that in the view did load so we'll say uh, super dot init then we want to uh, assign the parameter values to the different attributes so I will say first name and I'll assign to it the value that the user send us in the parameter user first name. Likewise last name and assign to it the value that the user send us in the parameter la user last name and then the email address attribute will carry the value that the user will send in the parameter user email address. Since I am subclassing from NS object and I have this init method that is a custom init method. It is recommended that I also provide an implementation for the default initializer. The default initializer is init without any parameters. So what should that default initializer do? Uh, first, you initialize the super class which is the parent class or what you built your class based upon. So we'll say super.init. And then the next step maybe uh, initialize with a sample uh, value. So is I don't anticipate anyone using this, but if somebody does, I'll put some initial value in here. So I will say that... Um, <clears throat> Uh, maybe I'll call this init. So I'll, I'll, I'll say self.init. Or I'll initialize those to an initial value. So I'll say this is uh, uh, 
or John Doe. And then the email address will be any email address that you want. Uh, so we'll say John Doe at uh, some email dot com, something like that. Just an initial value. And we have so this is telling us that uh, you are overriding the declaration, meaning that this init, the default init, already exists in the super class, and you changing the uh, implementation so you need to add the keyword override and you see here fix it by insert override sometimes the fix it suggestion is correct but some other time it is not depending on how Xcode understands your um, your code in here or what you're trying to do so that's the contact class with the attributes and the two initializers that we wanted and that gives us the initial step here and I will stop this video here so that you can uh, absorb that step and in the next video we'll create the data source.